good afternoon everyone uh, a very warm welcome to our webinar on gst 60 year anniversary so we are just two days away from gst turning 6 years old so we thought that it's a good time to uh, to recollect the memories that what all went ahead in these 6 years where we have come and what all we can expect in the future so uh, basically the content of this webinar will involve uh, remains in the journey as well as uh, predicting the future ahead uh, in the next four years of GST. So starting with, we'll discuss that uh, how GST uh, has married with technology. So the current government is focusing a lot or its primary objective has been on digitization of uh, economy and all the taxes, regimes, etc. So how GST since its, its inception has been very much dependent upon technology. Then we'll come on uh, that, uh, so GST came with the objective of seamless flow of credits, but in these six years, we saw that the ITC has become more of impossible tax credit with all the uh, conditions and blocking of pro, uh, blocking provisions therein. Then we'll move ahead with all the positions that have been tested before courts, whether before high courts and Supreme Court and what all uh, law of land have been laid by them. Then we'll move to retrospective amendments that have been brought by the legislature post certain rulings. So there were certain rulings which were in the favor of taxpayers and then retrospective amendments came in to nullify those rulings. So we'll discuss that. We'll also discuss on the uh, topics that are still awaiting the trial before courts, uh, which have not been yet reached to the courts. Then at last we'll discuss on continuation of department conventional approach. So department audits have gained peak in last couple of years, especially in this last year. So we'll discuss how have uh, how has been the approach of department and how we can expect in the future. And lastly, we wrote, wrote ahead towards next four years. So starting with our first topic. Uh, so here we have just captured the journey of GST uh, with technology. So in July, on July 1, 2017, GST was introduced. In this December 2017 was given as the due date of filing Tran 1. So after certain extensions, the last date of filing Tran 1 was December 2017. However, the taxpayers faced a lot of technical glitches and everything in transiting these credits. In April 2018, uh, eWay bill was implemented. In uh, September 2018, GSTR 2A was introduced. So even though the government's primary objective was to introduce GSTR 1, 2, 3 since beginning and matching of IITC to be done uh, since inception, however, no such mechanism was available on the portal and GSTR 2A was only introduced in September 2018. Then also this matching was not happening and legal provisions with respect to matching were brought in in October 2019 with introduction of Rule 36.4. Uh, post that in October 2020, e invoicing was implemented, and till date, there has been a gradual reduction in e invoicing thresholds. It started from 500 crores, and presently we are on 10, 10 crores. And from 1st August, uh, the threshold will be further reduced to 5 crores. And there have been recent news also that in future it will be reduced to 1.5 crores. So, businesses, very small businesses having turnover of even 1.5 crores, will have to jump into invoicing era then in december 2020 uh, even for b2c invoices B, uh, qr code was introduced that uh, even if you are invoicing to b2c customers you have to re, uh, have a qr code payment qr code on the invoices in uh, uh, during october to 2000 uh, november 2022 so two months were given for finally transiting your transition credits after Philco Supreme Court judgment that finally taxpayers were given option that their portals were open to file uh, revised transfers and transit their all credits. And lastly, recently in April 2023, it has been proposed that uh, e invoicing on the e invoicing portal invoices have to be uploaded within seven days of generation of invoice. So earlier there was no limit and people, uh, taxpayers were doing it after a month or two months as well. But now it has been proposed that uh, there would be a time limit and invoices can only be reported till seven days. However, currently this is being deferred and has not been implemented on the portal. 
so these are the major events that happened on the technology front now coming to where all uh, as taxpayers we stuck or as uh, government they stuck in implementing or marrying technology with gst first of all the very major issue uh, which finally got settled last year after reopening the portal was on technical glitches and online transition of credits every taxpayer almost every other taxpayer was facing this issue that they were not able to transit the credits due to multiple portal issues so this was major issue on technology front second was even though the scr 2a was introduced in september 18 it was not reflecting correct data so they were the import invoices were not appearing there were many invoices incorrect invoices were appearing from different taxpayers so this was not uh, a foolproof mechanism that was brought then uh, with respect to refunds we saw that gst portal and nice gate were not aligned since beginning and therefore there was a lot of problem in processing the funds now finally that flow has been made smooth and gst portal the data transmission between gst portal and nice gate is smoothened but earlier initial in the initial period there were a lot of glitches even when evable portal evable uh, was introduced the portal crashed on the first day and then there was a uh, delay in implementation of evable for one month and lastly uh, the very return, the very original return system the gsti 1 2 and 3 which were proposed uh introduced in july 1 were never implemented so this this was a big failure on the technology front and finally government had to settle on uh stop gap arrangements for the filing of returns moving ahead to another topic uh, which is how itc became the impossible tax credit with everything uh becoming uh, questioned by the departments and negative advance ruling on almost every issue so one basic issue has been uh, the operational challenges in matching of itc whether it was either initially gst or 2a and then 2b uh, the taxpayers are still facing issues in uh, matching this uh, in doing this memo tech exercise basically now they are, with time they are uh, getting used to it but this is indeed a memo tech exercise and uh, invest a lot of time is being invested by the taxpayers in doing this coming to legal provisions of input tax credit so almost each and every condition of availing credit has been challenged before the high courts uh talking about the matching conditions so earlier rule 364 was introduced which in october 19 had a buffer of 20% that you can take credit of whatever is appearing in gstr 2a but you can also take a 20% buffer credit during october 19 to december 21 we saw gradual decrease in this buffer from 10 uh, from 20 to 10 and then to 5% and finally in january 2022 section 16 2a was introduced which made uh, mandatory uh, for matching of credit that is without matching you cannot take any other credit not even uh, any one person there was no buffer so both these provisions uh, whether it's six, section 16 2a or rule 364 these have been challenged before uh, high courts uh, even our sister uh, concern has filed a red petition challenge in these provisions talking about another condition which is after matching comes where the tax has been paid by supplier this is another condition which is a uh, very tough for taxpayers to comply tough or i would say impossible because taxpayers right now cannot verify even today cannot verify whether their suppliers have paid the taxes to the government so earlier erstwhile uh, in erstwhile regime also in various var tax there was this provision and this has been challenged before the courts and uh, in arise india delhi high court and uh, city firm is alabal high court the judgments were positive in favor of taxpayers saying that bona fide buyers should not be punished for uh, suppliers non uh, compliance however for bogbe high court there was a negative ruling which said that it is a condition and legislature can impose this condition under gst as well on these grounds that uh, for bona fide buyers the credit should not be denied the validity of this provision has also been challenged again our firm has uh, challenged this provision and uh, uh, in one of the cases tenstar automotive it has been upheld also so there is a negative judgment but other two are pending between uh, delhi and tripura high court then there are certain other judgments under uh, gst which are positive on this front uh, dy bethel was the case wherein they said that you uh, 
the government should the department should first go to the supplier for uh, verification of uh, tax payment and then it should come to recipient in ngw gargo and many other uh, a couple of other cases that has been held that if the purchases are proved to be genuine by the purchaser then credit cannot be denied at purchaser's end so these are positive judgments on this condition then another condition is with respect to payment of uh, consideration to supplier within 180 days so there is a condition that if you don't pay to the supplier within 180 days you have to proportionately reverse the input tax rate availed in this respect again this has also been challenged though in our view there are very less grounds to challenge this provision because uh, itc is a benefit or a concession given by government and they can impose condition uh, in the earlier two cases it is they are punishing the innocent buyers so you can definitely challenge but in this case uh, this is a simple condition which can be imposed next is the condition with respect to section 164 that is time limit for availment of itc again constitutional validity of this provision has also been challenged before various high courts uh, uh, that credit should not be restricted and it's a vested right and it should be available in our view time limit has been upheld in erstwhile regime that uh, legislature has full right to restrict uh, uh, to restrict the credit up to certain limit and it should not be invariably available so again uh there are high chances that this provision will be upheld uh, at a later stage then there is a rule with respect to blocking of itc so this provision has also been challenged before high courts on the grounds of constitutional validity that whether there is any backup uh, statutory provision allowing blocking of itc and on what grounds they can block itc so on all these things this has been challenged this is a proposed provision which will uh, make the input tax credit even more uh, impossible for taxpayers to claim because uh, up till now the credit dependent upon supplier is only for payment of tax uh, or match uh, they are uploading in gsti one so right now there are only two things that are dependent upon supplier for taking credit one is they are showing their invoices in gsti one and second is they are paying taxes if this provision is uh, implemented section 16 2ba uh, read with section 38 then for any non compliant by supplier recipient will not be able to take credit that is even supply if supplier is taking ineligible credits in their returns then also uh, supplies from that supplier will be red flag for the recipient and recipient will not be able to take the credit so it will be hardly any credit that recipient will be able to avail after this provision is implemented but however as uh, till date no rules have been prescribed for this and uh, once the rules are prescribed they ha also have to equip the portal to cater to these changes so in next four years we may see this getting implemented apart from the condition for availing itc there is another provision under gst law section 175 which talks about blocked credits and uh, uh, with respect to blocked credits there are almost all the provisions of this section 17.5 are disputed and there have been negative advance ruling and department has preconceived notion from pre gst era, era where they are denying all the credits with respect to employees calling them to be personal in nature etc so uh, that approach has not been changed and in audits we see that almost all these credits are denied by the department or questioned by the department and similarly we see the advance rulings also in this respect whether it's canteen credit or uh, whether it's uh, with respect to uh, itc on foc items given the rulings have been negative only so to that extent also it is becoming uh, tougher only for taxpayers to re retain any credits moving next uh, uh, is the positions be uh, tested before courts so there have been various positions that went before high courts and supreme courts and they laid down the law first is by the supreme court in case of mohit mandel so uh, the levy of compensation test was challenged that where the constitution has power has given powers that uh, gst law can levy cesses so it was upheld that uh, article 246a gives enough power uh, to make laws with respect to gst and levy of cesses is a valid levy then there was bharti airtel supreme court ruling uh, this was the case with respect to rectification of gstr 3b so assessi was in this case uh, asking for rectification of 3b and allowing credits taking of credits and so it 
made payments in cash and later on it realized that there were certain credits it, uh, it could not avail so assessee was asking for rectification and thereafter refund of cash paid so uh, the supreme court held that uh, a portal gst portal is just a facilitator and as, uh, every taxpayer should self assess their taxes after duly recognizing the credits that are available etc and hence such uh, uh, rectification is not possible and there is no provision under gst law also to rectify the gst or fee however uh, even after this supreme court judgment there have been various high court judgments wherein the courts have been allowing the uh, rectification of gst r1 and 3b uh, citing that it is a revenue neutral case and it's a procedural thing and that people should be given this right etc so they are uh, exercising their jurisdictional powers to grant this relief to taxpayers in the case of vkc footsteps with respect to refund on inverted duty uh, structure uh, cases so the uh, appeal was whether inputs can be included in the uh, uh, whether input services can be included uh, can be included for uh, calculation of refund of uh, inverted duty structure so the supreme court said that you cannot read inputs as inclusive of input services and uh, therefore refund with respect to only input shall be available and not input services it also said that the proviso of section 543 is a restriction as against the uh, eligibility criteria in our view this ruling is incorrect because uh, section 543 only prescribes a condition in which cases you can apply for refund and inverted duty structure and it does not restrict the restriction comes from rules only which can be challenged but however supreme court has laid down this law so uh, after that taxpayers are not even contesting that even input services if one should be allowed in another case of mohit mandrels with respect to ocean freight so supreme court held that no rcm liability is there on ocean freight portion of import of goods and there was no uh, department did not decide to appeal further so the issue attained finality and there is no rcm liability on ocean freight now Philco Trade, as we discussed, the Supreme Court finally decided to reopen the common portal for transaction of credits last year for two months, wherein uh, all taxpayers availed this facility and finally transited the, all their credits. Uh, one issue that is still pending before Supreme Court is with respect to uh, validity to restrict transaction credit to only one year uh, of invoices uh, of stock. So this is still pending and yet to be decided by Supreme Court. another case was with respect to uh, promissory estoppel so a lot of taxpayers uh, went before uh, high courts and supreme court that uh, the area budgetary support service uh, budgetary support schemes the area based schemes that were available uh, in pre gst era should be continued as it is and benefit should not be reduced however they said that in gst the benefits have been reduced so the supreme court uh, held that estoppel is inapplicable where government exercises legislative function so promissory estoppel ground cannot be taken and whatever benefits is, are being granted by the legislature in gst era should be uh, should be finalized and uh, it also permitted the petitioners to file representations before state government and gst council if uh, they are heard and any increase in benefit is allowed by them safari retreat was one case with respect to uh, blocking of itc under section 175d so the dispute here was whether if you are availing goods and services with respect to construction of building and that building is further being rented out so uh, the appeal was where uh, the, the credit should be allowed in such cases because you are using the building for further renting and not uh, for your own uh, for for your own uh, as your own premises so in this case the supreme court read down section 175d and said that it should be allowed there should be allowed however the appeal is uh, sorry the odisha high court said that um, uh, it should be allowed uh, credit should be allowed in such cases if the buildings are further rented however the appeal before supreme court is still pending so we'll see in coming years that what supreme court decides on this uh, there was another case with respect to transition of credits Uh, whether cesses credits can be transitioned under gst regime so in this case uh, uh, the single bench 
single judge bench of madras high court said that cases can be transitioned under section 140 then division bench judgment was passed which overturned the single bench judgment there was series of amendments that tried to uh, disallow the transition of cases however uh, the appeal with respect to this issue is still pending before supreme court and uh, uh, ultimately supreme court will decide whether cases transition uh, credit of cases was allowed to be transitioned or not recently we we saw the judgment in the case of dharmendra jani uh, jani uh, from bombay high court with respect to intermediary services this, so the question of dispute was whether intermediary services qualify as intra state supply or inter state supply and whether they qualify as export of services so uh, the bombay high court said that intermediary services uh, qualifies intra state supply only and c uh, cgst plus sgst should be charged however at the same time it said uh, sorry it should be qualified as inter state supply and igst should be charged and not intra state even though supplier and place of supply are located in india uh, uh, at the same time it also said that uh, it should qualify as export of services and uh, section 138b and section 82 were held to be constitutional in nature that is they are valid and uh, uh, accordingly this was held in our view this judgment is incorrect to the extent uh, to the extent it said that it is it is a interstate supply and uh, still it qualify uh, uh, that it is uh, section 138b is relevant and still it qualifies export of service because both supplier and place of supplier in india then how it will qualify as export of services so to that extent it is incorrect there were two other judgments of supreme court uh, which were not from gst era but from pre gst era but which have an equal impact on gst regime one was with respect to classification dispute in case of westinghouse uh, wherein the uh, supreme court Uh, read note three in a manner that it should prevail over note two, and even if uh, goods are excluded by note two, if they are becoming part suitable for use solely or principally with a particular machinery, then it should be classified with that. So, uh, in our view, this ruling was incorrect, and which was uh, rightly said by the instructions also that the ruling is fact specific and should not be applied in uh, in a generic manner by all the industries. and this had a major impact on automobile inter- industry uh, almost uh, many uh, at the ports many custom officers were holding boards and using this judgment to uh, demand higher rate of duties and this will have an equal impact on gst in terms of whether the parts will qualify under 12% 18% or 28% depending upon their classification another judgment was with respect to northern operating for secondment of employees the supreme court uh, unsettled the settled issue of uh, secondment of employees there were a lot of judgment before this judgment which said that secondment of employees does not qualify to be a supply and uh, there should not be any arson liability however in this case uh, the supreme court said that it qualifies to be a manpower supply services and hence arson should be payable under service tax this equally impacted the gst regime and gst officers started demanding taxes from the taxpayers and taxpayers have also paid crores of demands in this regard recently again this ruling is fact specific and in our view uh, this can be distinguished on basis of the facts of each case moving next uh, so apart from the positions tested before courts there were certain uh, rulings which instigated the retrospective amendments starting from uh, uh, the very initial period wherein the dispute was whether gst or cb qualifies as a return under gst or not so there was a gujarat high court judgment in the case of appen company which said that gst or cb does not qualify as a return so the issue was with respect to whether a uh, time limit of taking credit should apply or not since uh, the credit is being taken in gst or cb and it does not qualify as a return return is all on the gstr 3 which is being deferred so in this case the uh, gujarat high court said gstr 3b is not a return and hence credit should be available even after the time limit of filing of 3b then there was a retrospective amendment in the rule 3 is uh, rule 61 wherein the legislature retrospectively amended the provisions to 
uh, to state that GSTR three B qualifies as return. Another retrospective amendment was with respect to section one forty one. Uh, so there was a dispute since beginning that uh, there is no time limit prescribed for transitioning credits under the uh, CGST Act. The time limit is only coming from rules, and there is no statutory provision for the same. So uh, Brand Equity Delhi High Court judgment said that no time limit is prescribed, and hence uh, transition should be allowed invariably. Basically, they applied the Limitation Act and said should be allowed within the Limitation Act timelines. Then retrospective amendment was made to uh, insert the expression within such time in section 141, and hence they corrected this lacuna in law. However, even after this judgment, there were uh, uh, many high court judgment which allowed the transition of credits even after this time limit, stating it to be uh, a vested right, etc., and uh, that it should be available even beyond this time limit. And finally, the Philco Supreme Court judgment was there, which allowed the credit even last year. There was uh, one case with respect to uh, the supply between clubs and members. So the, there was a Supreme Court judgment with respect to Calcutta Club, which said that no tax can be levied between clubs and its members, and they do not qualify as they do not qualify to be two separate legal entities. Then there was uh, again a retrospective amendment was made after this judgment in Section 71AA, wherein they said that members and clubs are distinct persons for the purpose of GST, and hence their uh, uh, transaction should be taxable. So all these clubs and members face a lot of problem in this case as they had to pay taxes from inception of GST, and huge interest liabilities, that sector was being demanded. Another uh, retrospective amendment that is notable is with respect to section 51, that is whether interest should be payable on net cash liability or gross liability, which includes the credit adjustment. So section 51 was amended to provide that interest is only applicable on the payment that is being made through cash and not through credit adjustment. Then there was uh, the Flex Industries Madras High Court judgment, which said that this amendment is clarificatory and should be operative retrospectively. So even since inception, the interest should not be applicable on the gross liability. Then to uh, implement this uh, Madras High Court judgment's uh, statement, they, there was a press release which also clarified that the department should not recover interest for on the gross liability since inception. And finally, Finance Act 2021 was uh, substituted retrospectively to uh, implement all these judgments and press releases, etc. With respect to merchant trading, high sea sales, and inbound sales transactions, uh, uh, amendment was made in February 1, 2019 that all these transactions should not be treated as supply. Uh, previous to this, there was a dispute whether these qualify as supply or not, and taxpayers were mostly paying taxes. However, uh, after this amendment, it was clarified that these transactions do not qualify as supply. Then there was a Gujarat Triple AR which said that uh, since the amendment is made on February 1 for the prior period, GST is payable and this is not retrospective. Recently, in Finance Act 2023, they have inserted Para 7 and 8 to be made retrospectively uh, amended from July 1. So, e since inception, if uh, the taxes have not paid GST on these transactions. Now there is no need to. But uh, this this amendment is yet to be notified. However, this has been introduced in Finance Act, so it will be notified. But once it is notified, no need to pay any taxes on these transactions. Moving next uh, are those issues that are still awaiting trial before courts. So we have listed down certain issues wherein there have been advanced ruling or they are disputed by the departments on a regular basis or EGI, et cetera, but still they have not reached the courts for their finality. One major issue is cross-charge versus ISD, which is a hot topic for last three to four years, wherein all in all these stage departments are asking for payment either on cross-charge or ISD. They are asking for ISD registration as well as payment. Uh, on cross-charge, but the issue is yet to be tested before the courts, whether it both should be mandatory or only one should suffice, or whether ISD is a mandatory or an optional, everything needs to be tested. With respect to discounts and incentives, so postal discounts was a uh, 
uh, litigious issue under pre-GST era as well and uh, under GST regime as well. This has been contested by the department officers. Uh, various data and information are being asked from taxpayers to prove that how they have reduced the GST on this uh, discounts, whether they have satisfied the condition of post-sale discounts, etc. So this is also one issue that needs to be tested. Another important issue is employee recovery. So there have been multiple advanced rulings on both the sides. The, some say that employee recoveries are taxable under GST and some say that they do not qualify to be the business of the SSC, so it should not be termed as supply. However, finally, we'll see what the High Court or Supreme Court say on this. With respect to valuation, uh, scope of second provisor to Rule 28 uh, is an interesting provision under GST, which was not there under the spell regime, but under GST, they have said that if recipient is available, is eligible to avail credits, then you can adopt any value even in case of related parties. So most of the transactions, whether it's cross charge or employee recov uh, recoveries, etc., wherever uh, uh, wherever there is a case that recipient is eligible to take credit, uh, normally we suggest that taxpayers should take benefit of second provisor to Rule 28 to avoid interest liability. Uh, however, there have been many advanced rulings which uh, uh, which are favorable on this ground, but still there is a fear among taxpayers that this might be contested this uh, might be contested by the department and there might be a question that you cannot adopt any value whether it's one rupee or ten rupee or hundred rupees whether it is allowed or not so this provision also needs to be tested that how courts will read uh, the scope of this proviso with respect to place of supply um, on ex work transactions whether you have to pay cgst sgst or IGST depending upon the uh, registered address of the recipient. Uh, this is a position that needs to, while there is a FAQ clarifying that for export transactions, the delivery is terminating uh, uh, on when you hand over the goods. And if there is a registered address, you can charge IGST. However, still, uh, we feel that courts need to test this issue and give finality. Similarly, for R&D and testing services, whether it should be based on the testing reports or where the tests are performed or R&D is performed, it should be dependent that place of supply is in India or outside India, etc. On RCM, uh, there are various issues. One that is uh, very much in trend is with respect to state industrial development authorities giving land on lease to uh, taxpayers. So many of the companies are paying RCM on these transactions when they take these land, but many are missing also as they uh, there is a dispute whether it becomes a sale of land or a leased land. So in our view, RCM is payable on these transactions. And then there is a subsequent leg when if the taxpayer who has taken land on these, he is also subletting that land, whether GST is payable on that or not. So DGGI has recently started investigations on the second leg of the transaction because there have been a lot of data and information that taxpayers are not paying taxes on the second leg. So this, these investigations have started recently and in coming years, we see uh, these getting concluded. Another issue that came to light in last year was guarantees, uh, GST applicability on guarantees that foreign group companies are giving to Indian group companies, directors are giving, or even Indian group companies are giving to each other. So uh, GST applicability stating that since these are all related persons and even if free of uh, cost, they are giving guarantees it should be uh, liable to GST uh, on the open market value. So in this case also a lot of disputes have been raised by the department and demands are being raised. So we'll have to see that what courts finally say because uh, one view can be taken that there is no supply between the related persons because if uh, a group company is providing guarantee to another group company they, uh, without any consideration being involved. So that is not a supply. But yes, it has to be tested. With respect to ITC, a lot of things are pan pending, a lot of issues are pending to be tested. One is, of course, ITC on canteen services, though there are a lot of advanced rulings, but still we'll have to see what courts finally say. Uh, even though in our view, now the circular is clear, the credit is available on canteen services, but still taxpayers are facing a lot of dispute in this. Then goods given on FOC basis as part of scheme. So the department has a notion that 
prayer should not be available as it's a gift but in our view it's a part of scheme the care should be available so advance ruling that there both positive and negative so finally the courts will decide the fate of this issue next is with respect to goods or services used for construction so there is a lot of ambiguity whether what all goods and services will be covered under the scope scope for construction that is only those goods and services that are being taken for the immediate activity of construction that are directly related to the construction or all those goods and services like for the legal services that are indirectly related to construction so this also needs to be tested csr expenses uh, while there has been a recent amendment disallowing credit on csr expenses uh, the amendment is prospective in nature so for the past few years if taxpayers have taken credits on csr expenses whether it should be it would be allowed by the courts or not this has to be seen and lastly with respect to goods lost stolen destroyed expired there are a lot of disputes whether goods are getting damaged or destroyed in transit or during manufacturing process etc so whether credit should be reversed in these cases or it should be allowed uh with respect to departments conventional approach uh, what we have seen in uh, last one year is that there have been multiplicity of proceedings there are multiple wings whether state center audit wing etc then dggi is there so on the same issue uh, multiple proceedings are being initiated by different wings then during the investigations and uh, scrutinies uh, there have been coercion harassment of taxpayers they are made sit till uh, midnight or, or even till morning and they are asked uh, to make payments forced payments that they have to make the payment unless and until they will not leave them even they in in some cases they have gone as harsh as to uh, order arrest so the department's approach has been very uh, rude and harsh uh, in case of investigation with respect to uh, conventional procedures so they are still asking for uh, uh, offline documents hard copies etc they are proceeding with uh, 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 they are not go, uh, uploading the orders on the portal etc and asking for uh, offline proceedings for appeal etc and lastly they are asking irrespective of everything being available online they are still asking for a lot of papers for all the invoices etc without even accepting the sample invoices so the department's approach overall we have seen is being very conventional as we saw in the pre gst era they are continuing with that approach harassing uh, taxpayers so this needs to be seen if they uh, in future they uh, rationalize it or they uh, make it liberal or they continue to be like this only coming on the last segment of the webinar which is the future of next 4 years uh one of course is the setting up of gstat and national uh, aaa r gstat uh, now the finally green flag has been given uh, in the finance act 2023 and the council has also been taking up however the recent restriction with respect to non appointing of lawyers in this committee uh, in the tribunal uh, is another area of concern which will again uh, attract uh, or may delay the composition of G start and finally, uh, it being functional. National Triple AR was introduced to to have a finality of ruling wherein two different states advanced ruling authorities are giving different uh, views. So it was proposed that National Triple AR will come who will decide on the title, but this is also pending before the uh, council to implement. apart from this uh, fully functional portal so gst gst portal has been growing uh, since day one we have seen so many trials and errors the government has tried various return filing systems have been tried initially 1 2 3 then a stop gap arrangement was there for gst on 3b and 2a then new return system was introduced which was uh, proposed and scrapped so now finally they have revamped the entire gst on 3b So a lot of trials and errors have been there. So we, we'll, in future, hopefully, we'll see a fully functional portal, whether it's GST portal, e-bill portal, invoicing portal, where there are no technical glitches and they are synced with the law. Proper ITC reconciliation mechanism will always be the top radar uh, of the government. They have to uh, implement this in the full-fledged manner so that they can curb the tax leakages and fraudulent invoicing. So. 
this will be another thing that is streamlined in coming years. Uh, as we discussed, there are a lot of provisions that are constitutionally challenged before the High Court. So uh, we expect the finality of all these constitutional challenges because this will shape the uh, law, GST law in future, that whether all these provisions should be read down or they will be upheld and basis that taxpayers will finally take calls in their businesses as huge financial risk they are carrying right now because of all these tendencies. Uh, recently, we saw a surge in the Shoka's notices for the obvious reasons that uh, for the period 17, 18, uh, the normal period is getting time barred in December, uh, in September. So Shoka's notices are being issued and then for 18, 19, it is getting time barred in December and finally for 19, 20 in March. So in next one year, we'll see a lot of Shoka's notices for the initial three years of DSC. Even though uh, we have seen that departments have ultimately uh, invoke the extended period wherever they have not been able to issue SCMs in normal period. But uh, seeing the surge in Shoka's notices these days, we see that we feel that department is still trying to issue the Shoka's notices in normal period. And if anything is left, they would obviously resort to the extended period. Uh, there has been also a proposal in GST Council meetings that they will. They are setting up certain uh, sector-specific resolution committees to deal with sector-specific issues. Uh, some of the sector, uh, some of the resolution committees have been set, uh, have already been set up, and some will be set up in future. Lastly, we can also see the rate rationalization. Still, we have multiple slabs, whether it's five percent, twelve percent, eighteen percent, twenty-eight percent, and there have been a huge pressure by the industry that these rates should be rationalized and either maximum two or three rates should be there. So we might see that government uh, rationalize rates further. So uh, this is the future. And uh, just to highlight that uh, uh, in all these six years, we have seen 600 notifications that were issued for proposing various amendments, various circulars were uh, issued, 200 circulars were issued almost uh, to clarify various disputes, whether it was with respect to liquidated damages or credit on canteen and transportation services. So the government has been trying to clarify the issues which are uh, which are there with the taxpayers. And uh, <clears throat> with respect to registrations, uh, as per the recent statistics, almost 1% uh, of the population of uh, India has registered as GST, uh, has, uh, has now registered under GST. Initial only uh, 65 lakhs people were migrated when GST regime came uh, and post that in these six years, we have seen that uh, 80 lakhs people have more, uh, businesses have more registered under GST. So uh, on and all, the GST journey is going good uh, as seen from the government's perspective. The collections are good, the registrations are good and things are streamlining. But we feel that a lot has to be done and next four years are going to be crucial in this respect that how the Supreme Court and High Court shape the uh, law uh, and they take, uh, give the final decisions on various disputed provisions and how the government also uh, makes the portal uh, taxpayer friendly and everything and department's approach will also be seen. So these all are the things that we'll see in coming four years. Uh, this was all. I, we hope that it was useful session and an informative session for you all. We look forward to see you all in our next webinar series. Uh, in coming week, we'll be doing a detailed session with respect to GST implication on uh, land lease holdings, which is being disputed a lot by DGGI right now in Maharashtra and uh, other states. So we'll be having a detailed webinar on the same. So we hope we see you all there. Thank you, everyone.